We are not happy, however, that this process started without the Election and Boundaries Commission being sworn in. We heard the news last night that there will be a special uh, meeting of the Senate to approve the members of the Commission, but we find it wholly unsatisfactory that this Commission has not been approved, has not been sworn in, even though we have named our Commissioners all the way back in, in April. As you all may know, the Election and Boundaries Commission uh, term um, expired the end of April, and before that expiration, we named our um, commissioners. So there's no reason why this commission could not have been sworn in before. We also find that the commission as a whole, um, the chairman of the commission, has not really been carrying out his office effectively. We can't recall getting um, any reports from the commission that is as required since 2010, I believe, or at least for the last few years, we have not gotten any reports from the Election and Boundaries Commission. In fact, as far as we know, the last meeting of the Election and Boundaries Commission was before the municipal election in January. So as I said, we are unsatisfied that the commission is not in place before the start of the re-registration exercise, and we hope that the swearing-in can happen quickly after the Senate meeting on Thursday. We feel that the UDP has politicized that office when it really should be an impartial office. This is a commission directing the, the elections and the democratic process in this country. And right now, I think the, the, um, one of their commissioners is their, is their secretary general, you so know? Party a party employee, a party official. Will the PUP do anything about it? Tell me PUP do anything about it. Well, the parties name their, their uh, commissioners and the Senate approves it. So. It would be up to the senators to raise that issue, but there's not much we can do in terms of stopping them from naming the persons. We just feel that it should be a position um, that should be impartial, no? I believe that you cannot set policy without having a commission in place. How can one person, the chairman of the commission, Mr. Doug Singh, be in charge of setting policy? Yes, it's true that the chief elections officer carries out the day-to-day the -day, uh, workings of the office, and, and so on, and, and the, the policies of that set by the commission. But they have not met since January, and there are big issues happening in this country.